Despite anti-LGBTQ plus laws in Kansas and Missouri, Kansas City moves to become a trans sanctuary city. A large crowd did stand and applaud the mayor and the council after they unanimously supported this resolution in committee this morning. With it now passed out of committee, the full council is expected to approve the resolution tomorrow, making Kansas City a sanctuary city for gender affirming care. Now that care is given to people who have a different gender identity than the biological one they're born with. Marique Jensen is living that experience. Marique was one of many people who watched the committee vote in favor of this resolution. Officials in Missouri's largest city are moving to declare it a sanctuary for people seeking or providing gender affirming care, defying state officials who are intent on banning it for minors and restricting it for adults. A Kansas City Council Committee approved such a resolution on Wednesday. The council members acted as the Republican-controlled Missouri legislature gave final approval to a bill banning gender-affirming care for transgender minors, sending it to GOP Governor Mike Parson, who is expected to sign it into law. At least 16 other states have enacted laws restricting or banning such care for minors. The resolution also comes as the judge considers a proposed emergency rule from Republican State Attorney General Andrew Bailey that would require adults and children to undergo more than a year of therapy and fulfill other requirements before they could receive gender-affirming treatment. The resolution, approved by the Transportation, Infrastructure, and Operations Committee after being proposed by LGBTQ advocates, says the city will not prosecute or fine any person or organization that seeks, provides, receives, or helps someone receiving gender-affirming care such as puberty blockers, hormones, or surgery. It also says if the state passes a law or resolution that imposes criminal or civil punishments, fines, or professional sanctions in such cases, personnel in Missouri's largest city will make enforcing those requirements their absolute lowest priority. This, I can't believe we're talking about this in 2023. <laughs> It's crazy. I mean, hats off to Kansas City for making a stand. And I always say it's really important to choose your local officials wisely because at the local level, things like this can happen. Yeah, that's right. So. It's, it's a little scary now because now we have an, a, a governor that's unhinged who is removing a local elected officials who dare even try to Challenge. fight back. So mm -hmm. I'm really happy other states are figuring a way around it. I hope that our elected officials don't get bullied and scared by the governor by a threat of being removed from office like Andrew Warren and, and others who've experienced. Well, it's going to be interesting because, as the story said, Kansas is divided into two states, Kansas City, right. Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri. And I'm from Missouri, born and raised there, and it's always been a well-known fact that a lot of times when the Missouri side wants one thing, the Kansas side doesn't always want the same thing. So it's, it's nice to see that both sides are cohesive in there approach and in their mindset for this but it'll be interesting to see because kansas city and st louis are the two largest cities in the state just like in florida or most states there's one city and the rest is all a right. little less populated so it'll see how it'll be interesting to see how the state battles because st louis is in the midst of deciding that same thing right now so it'll be interesting to see how the state tackles the two largest populations mm. two largest taxation mm. resources mm -hmm. from a public sector see how it re responds to both of those. But it's going to be a battle, and it's going to be a nasty one, I can guarantee you, because the M Missouri's got some very staunch conservatives on their, in their state, state positions. Sure. I think it's going to be a battle all across the board in the United States. Yeah, you know, this is such a divided issue. Um, I do believe, though, a majority of the people are in support of trans rights and, yeah. you know, gender-affirming care. Past Just, polls suggest that. Yeah. yeah they even do. Republicans. <laughs> yeah, really even with Republicans. Polls. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But we'll see so, how it goes. It's interesting. Trans rights are human human rights. And here we are, you know, even in our own state, we're like battling the same thing. Yeah. So like you said earlier, I hope I hope that our local government doesn't get bullied. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think like Miami Beach will be, they've right. been very vocal about it already. And I, I guess Broward should yeah. be the same. Well, and there'll be a lot of lawsuits so. being raised over this be between the local right. communities battling the state. So there's actually, uh, I learned yesterday that 
um, because of the legislation passed by the Florida legislature. Um, Broward County is, uh, I think, our LGBTQ human rights uh, ordinance is going to have to change. And I also heard that our Tenants Bill of Rights is pretty much gone because yeah. of the legislation passed by the state. So um, it's going to really take the, the cities deciding to really either ignore the law or a lawsuit will, will be yeah, really helpful. There'll be a lot of lawsuits. It can get enjoined and then that'll solve the issue. Because the language is very vague in, in most of these cases because right. that's one of the biggest weaknesses of the situation is that the laws have been written so quickly that they're so vague that it's like, well, what, well your dis determination of what's medically right for right. someone, a child, is much different than your version and or the doctor's version. So this is definitely going to go to court. Right. Well, they're not just attacking our youth. They're also attacking adults. They're attacking parents through all of these laws. It's, absolutely. It's absolutely crazy. The performers, the drag performers on the drive, like getting limited on where they can perform and how they can perform. If there's an open window to the public, let alone an outdoor venue, like it's just, it's insane. And what I saw today um, on a very, you know, trustworthy site, TikTok, um, was a young girl who kind of started listing the legislation that has come up, the bills that have come up in the midst of all of this that have kind of been unspoken of and as far as the news goes so i think that there's a lot of like hey look over here while we're yeah. getting all this other stuff going on too and you know you feed the right words to the masses and they start chewing on them and then they start to believe them so mm -hmm. oh the times we live yeah. in. you're definitely from missouri though because you said missouri yep <laughs> i had to listen there a little bit uh -huh. missouri. missouri that's the missouri. st louis in me that's we are Queer News Tonight, the world's first and only live daily LGBTQ plus evening news show from Happening Out Television Network. In the model of PBS and NPR, we educate, inform, and entertain by supporting the 10 pillars of the LGBTQ plus community with more than 100,000 a week watching on Roku, Apple Television, and other channels. To keep the stories going, we accept donations with 100% transparency stay updated, and live authentically with Queer News Tonight.